this moment packed more of a punch than I initially realised. It wasn't just that my home on wheels had gone and died on me and I was fighting to rebuild the thing. All the pressure of doing it, filming it and editing it all at the same time. Nor was it just the few years prior. The pandemic, the lockdowns and quarantines, all of the madness from them few years. All the vibe that, you know, the entire planet seemingly went insane. It wasn't just our issues with the residency for Portugal, or being forced to pause that plan for a year. It was the culmination of all of these things and more that would cause my second breakdown. This isn't content for me anymore. I've wasted five hours feeling like I was being swallowed up by the ground. You know that voice in your head? The internal monologue that reads out your thoughts, tells you how to do things, brings up memories, and occasionally will tell you off in a manner of primal protection. Well, mine, once again, has become very loud and like to turn on me. With all the ammunition it needs of my memories, embarrassing moments and failures throughout life. I've always had to work quite hard to keep that voice at bay and use logic to dismiss it. But after the most recent tumble, those guards have come crashing down and the internal chatter has hit full throttle. All of a sudden, I could barely function. I'd second guess everything. The fight or flight response was held wide open. I'd get lost in thought patterns that would send me into a tailspin, all fueled by similar memories of those times I got it wrong. I'd become distant, unenthused, foggy brained, tired all the time, and honestly, quite easily triggered. Yeah, me and Lance are gonna be here for a little bit. I mean, it's not too bad. I've got enough food, water, diesel. Nothing I made was good enough anymore, according to my inner bully and very quickly the thing I love doing wasn't fun anymore. Uh, I'm not enjoying it. I mean, it's starting to f*** my head a little bit. Things got quite low. But hey, how dare I admit that, because I'm living my best van life. I get to work from anywhere on the road and I'm basically on holiday for a living. So why the hell am I struggling and how am I not enjoying every second of my day? But there was a long, very overdue journey I had to make to visit some friends that I was going to use, pin everything on, hope and pray that it might just give the jolt back to reality that I desperately need. This is that journey. Oh no! <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs>
Calm. Calm. Get your stuff. Come on. Come on. <sighs> okay, head out your ass. Come on, make some content. Slimmeboeren.nl en digiwelkomst.nl. Wil Nederland, Alusta.nl. Luxe vakantiewoningen op eigen. Zullen de koffie kicken, you know? Oh, right, good effort. The queue for border control went pretty quickly, and before we knew it, we were out the other side and ready to go. But after a 12 hour crossing, Lance needed to be emptied. Longest way in history. Is that better? You want to have a poop? You know you want to poop. Yeah, he's going for one. I see the bum going. Yeah. Well, after that quality storytelling, we got on the road. Going through various tunnels, bridges, past a lot of ships, and even down a motorway that goes directly through one of the busiest airports in Europe. And then back into tunnels. Koffiezeldoeken 1 euro, schoenkruim 1 euro, mirabomokken 1 euro, snoeptap, stabalon en nog veel meer. Allemaal voor maar 1 euro per stuk. Alleen in de Hema winkel. Dus kom snel. Ja, yeah. weet jij het al? And all of this took us further towards our first destination. <laughs> I love it, there's a shop there just called Burger. But it doesn't sell burgers. Three minutes, Lance. And we'll be strolling round Amsterdam. Hey? Eh? There's a weird junction here. What the f I can't do that. You've got zebra crossings everywhere and then bike lane crossings everywhere. Um, there's a lot to look out for. <laughs> Oh shit, I'm supposed to go down there. Oh, I'm gonna go round again. Ooh, we're just gonna go for it, I guess. You can see why I struggled on this, right? It just does not look like a road. But I made it over the bike lane and got back on track. Seeing some campsite signs let me know I was going in the right direction. Even if there were some obstacles in the way. What? Well, why did you just do that? Yes, that's right. The Netherlands has quite a strict no wild camping policy and especially around Amsterdam it's tricky to stick a motorhome somewhere so I headed over to one of the four or five city campsites that are available and although full, because I didn't need any services they were kind enough to squeeze me in. With the van now parked safe and sound we wasted no time on going to see the sites. The campsite staff were great actually and gave me lots of need to know info including how to get in. I wouldn't have had a clue that nearly all of the city ferries around Amsterdam are free and that you just walk onto them. It's been a long time since I've been in the town of wonky buildings, endless bridges and boats, bicycles, but also its interesting shops, cafes and <laughs> wares of the green and red variety. I love this place for all of its many quirks. I mean, how many other places on the high street would you find supermarkets and restaurants right next door to the sex museum and coffee shop? All madness aside though, there's one thing that's undeniable. Amsterdam is extremely pretty. Me and Lance just strolled around for a fair few hours, just taking it all in. We had a great time. But one thing quickly become very clear. Not 
the best with dogs. Everywhere had no dog signs, and when we did eventually find a place I could let Lance off, well... It's literally a bog. So after a five minute run around here, we went to find a more suitable exercise area. Where's the keys? Oh, come on then. Ooh, what we got here? Oh no. Let me in then. Um, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. You've been uh, face deep in piss again, I see. Unfortunately, I just I was struggling to get around and see things and go into places. I wanted to get some food. We were going to share a hot dog, but they're all walk in places. There's no street food I couldn't find anywhere. Um, all the cafes were ramming. So it was just like, ugh, it's just not working with, with little Lance. So I brought him back. We're gonna have a little 20 minute rest, maybe a half an hour nap, because of the ferry. I got to sleep at about half one, and then I woke up at quarter to six. So yeah, I'm a little just, and then the time changed and that balls me right up, because I had an appointment. A conference call today and I'm just <laughs> I'm just glad I'm on a campsite tonight put it that way stumble back here and just chill yeah I'm gonna take a little uh, jaunt back in uh, later on after a coffee Ugh. and uh, see what Amsterdam has to offer as in by sandwich not the red light district. <laughs> Naughty. That is one hell of a motorhome over there. It's huge. And it's a Benz. <sighs> Move over you. Incoming. Ah. <laughs> Once alone, I got to go in all the shops that I'd missed, sample some of the food outlets, grab a few souvenirs and gifts, and some of the other outlets. Hmm. But surprisingly, after all that, I couldn't be bothered to walk back, so opted to get the metro, which figuratively and literally was a trip. That night, topped up with Lance and aided by some cakes, we sat down to watch the extremely mind-bending Alice in Wonderland and had a wonderful time. What an incredibly large head you have. I should very much like to have it. A long trip ahead. With our quick overnight in Amsterdam now over, it was time to get back on the road. We had a long, long way to go. And the Netherlands was just one of two countries I had to get through today. But not before emptying the shitter. <laughs> hours 20 minutes so we'll be driving for a little bit there is a cool part on the map coming up though and it looks like the road just goes through the sea it only added like 20 minutes on so i thought let's go see what that's all about aided by a few podcasts we settled in for the long haul it was just us and this strip of tarmac for a long time until the tarmac moved just casually in the middle of the motorway the um the road lifts up. Yeah. 
Although it was a surprise and quite interesting to see the motorway lift into the sky, honestly it was kind of pointless. The boat that went under it was small enough to get under there with it closed, but hey, it's an experience. And once it lowered itself back down into road mode, we could carry on. Very shortly after that, this weird highway got even weirder as it sent us out into the sea. pulled into the mid-ocean services, yeah, to give Lance a wee and also get a better look at the surroundings. And after a bit of a Google, I found that this isn't just a motorway, but also a massive storm defence and integral to the Netherlands' entire existence. Without it, it'd be underwater. Break time for little man. Is there any patch of the Netherlands that isn't just underwater? But then again, that's part of their history, isn't it? Didn't they dredge the entire country? I should know more. Be more cultured. I know to you these breaks seem like a few minutes apart, but to us, they're two hours apart. Lance is a Spaniel, so needs regular stops to burn some energy that builds up. Otherwise, frankly, he's a f***ing nightmare. After rolling up a bit of road food, we got back on the road, smooth, where we encountered an almost full weather cycle as a storm passed overhead. As fast as it arrived, it disappeared again. And in that, we'd realised we'd missed something. I don't remember crossing a border, but all of a sudden, all the reg plates have turned to German. And this motorway seems to now be an autobahn. There is no speed limit. It's the first time I've been on one and f is it stressful. You're like coming up on lorries that are going slow and you haven't got like time to get out and round because people are going past at like 110. <laughs> but the further on we went, the more it became obvious we were in Germany. Like the exit signs. Busfahrt. So that explains the raceway then. Fuel stop number two, um, German, what am I at? Oh good, number one, Eins. Eins bitte, danke. Aus in des aus allen Weltregionen zurückzuziehen, ist aus Sicht des Auswärtigen Amtes keine kluge Politik. Nope. Auch wenn man... Ah, nein. Oh, what a tune. Making it very obvious that I need a subwoofer though. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to let you listen to this track without me talking over it and changing the pitch slightly because the YouTube algorithm is pretty good at this sort of stuff now and it's going to absolutely bone me. Enjoy, fucking dear. Mm. I think it might be time for a break, Lance. Break and a walk, yeah? I know just the place. The land of the bridges. 
second you enter Hamburg, you're greeted by a lot of McDonald's signs. It's on billboards, the arches are up on plinths, it's even in the clocks. And for a second that confused me. Why? Because it's Hamburg, the home of the hamburger. What's even more prevalent is just the amount of bridges. With 2,500, it's over double what Amsterdam has. They are everywhere. And we trundled our way down this cobble street that kind of looked closed because between 6am and 6pm you can park your camper van for free. Oh, nice gear change. After parting ways with a little bit of clutch we made it up the curb and parked. Right in the centre of Hamburg. Look at that bottom teeth! <laughs> Come on then. Come on. Sorry buddy, just too late. The surrounding buildings were oppressively impressive. And the next row along just so happened to house something I'd seen on the internet. We'll come back to that one later. Sorry, she's in a clam. But for now it was Lance's evening Come on. walk. Lance, here. Come on. There was a lot around Hamburg to see, but something was pulling me towards that steeple. More church bells. Oh wow. No, that one not good enough. Sorry if this isn't interesting to you, but I'm just having a wonder, man. Glad I'm here at night, you know, everything's just starting to light up now and turn on. We're never gonna get anywhere, you keep peeing on things. It was as I stepped inside that it clicked. The spire remained, but the rest of the place got destroyed in World War II. And why does this hold significance? Well, to know that, you'd need to know a little bit about my hometown of Coventry. Just a few weeks ago, I was stood in an almost carbon copy of these ruins, as Coventry Cathedral was also bombed just three years before this one. Two impressive and very similar religious buildings caught up in a war that they had no part of and destroyed. I'd popped into town to see a friend perform in an art gallery and for some reason just popped in to have a look. So to just so happen to pop into Hamburg and stumble across this place felt a little bit more significant than coincidence. There's quite a lot of similarities between Hamburg and Coventry albeit Hamburg being on a much grander scale, but it made for an incredible evening dog walk. In that storm we caught on the motorway is catching up with us. He went for that heat to come on, eh? Hey? Oh god, yeah. Um 
I could stay here technically and then do a bit more tomorrow but I don't know I've seen some cities now and uh, if I want to stay here I've got to be gone by 6 a.m. and I'm not a 6 a.m. dude so yeah I think we might get back on the road but the nice thing about it is we literally just come off the motorway parked here and I can just dive back on and shoot straight back on so it was a nice little worked out well you know just to give him a bit of a walk a bit of a break yeah we'll carry on in the bloody torrential rain before we go literally there is the miniature wonderland which I've seen on YouTube videos and stuff before and my inner child my inner Hornby loving geeky self is like mmm and it's open till 1am you can't come I'm afraid Let's get you toweled off shall we oh I'll get this off yeah oh, excuse the darkness things in place for that now. Artificial lighting and everything now. Oh, I'm blind. Ha! Towel. Right. Oh, okay. Have I left you on super? I have, as I? Yeah. I wondered why it was so domed. I left it on dome for that time lapse, didn't I? Oh, mm, mm. you enjoy that walk? Eh? You want some food and some water? I'm not done with you. Uh. <laughs> 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 mm. I'm to get your bum. Super fluffy butt. Mm. The feet. The feet, especially. You're in your element here, aren't you? Eh? Life of luxury, this. This dog. Right, let's sort this out then. There we are. Now the van looks tiny again. Mm -hmm. So I strolled over to the miniature wonderland, which I've only got footage of it in the day. Damn it. Bear with. <laughs> There we go, that evening I went to the Miniature Wonderland and I went in pretty naive thinking I was going to see a few models and it'd just be a bit nice. What was in there, well I don't even feel I need to narrate, just have a look at the level of detail and let your mind be as blown as mine was.
quick look around turned into me staying until closing time. And then after letting Lance pee on yet more of Hamburg, we got back in the van and continued on our journey.